Well, I'd like to thank everybody at CLO for the invite. This is my first time in South America and first time in Brazil, obviously. And congratulations on the first 15 years, and hopefully it'll carry on for another 15 years. Um, I'm from Thomson Reuters. I'm not going to talk about the infamous impact factor. Um, I'm going to leave that out. Don't send me back to Philadelphia. I'm from London, and my wife would like me back, so let's not get into that. Um, I changed the title of my talk slightly. Um, it, it's more to do with the tools that will help you manage a journal. So I'm going to go through some slides initially just to set the background. But I think that anybody that's been here for the last few days knows that the that, that output from this region is growing. And all this graph shows is South American authors and the output in the web of science. And as we know, that's not the complete output. That's just a small portion. And it is obviously centric to the Northern Hemisphere. But the, the message is it's growing. There's more publication. There's more publication output. And we can look here. We don't need to focus on the figures themselves. But we can look at the, uh, the journals those authors are submitting to. And there are local journals and there are international journals. So that output is going to many different places. And if we look at submission growth, this is submission growth in Scholar One manuscripts, and that's for the entire world. And we see at the top here that um, the United States is the biggest contributor to submissions. China is rising quite rapidly behind it. But I just wanted to focus on Brazil there. It's in 16th place at the moment. That's not a bad thing. There are 126 countries represented here, and being 16 is good. The trend is up. Next to China, Brazil is the biggest growth region currently in the world for submissions. So that content is coming out of the system, and it's coming into our system, and it generates an issue. It generates an issue of managing it and having the tools to manage it. And if you just focus on some, uh, these are submissions from the CLO network, just to focus a bit more in, in detail. And you see we have Spain, but very close behind we have Brazil. And then we have Portugal, Mexico, and Argentina. So all these countries are growing in their output. Brazil is leading the charge, but others are following quite closely behind. And I also wanted to say it's not just the local region. You are getting submissions. These are CLO journals which use Scholar One manuscripts. We have 56, I think, at the moment using Scholar One manuscripts. You are getting submissions from outside the region, too. I haven't plotted this on a trend, but I think you'll see as time goes along that more submissions are coming from elsewhere in, in the world. And that's another source of growth. It's not just local growth, it's international growth. And as your journals become more international, you will get to see more of this. And again, it adds to that burden. So I'm going to quickly go through the, the process and where we provide those tools to help you manage that growth. And it all starts with manuscript submission. That's where manuscripts come into the system. But then we have the editorial process, and that's the heart of it. This, this is what our tool, Scholar One Manuscripts, focuses on. And we have checking, so making sure those manuscripts are suitable to go through the process. Finding the right editors, the person who manages the, the, the actual peer review, making sure you get the right person. The review itself, so managing, that, that's the real heart of, of everything that happens. So you need to select the right people, find enough people. Invite them efficiently. Make sure that they can respond in a timely fashion, that you're not waiting for them to get back to you. Give those reviewers access to the papers. Make sure that they can see what they need to see. And let them score. So let them report on those manuscripts. Let them give you the vital feedback that lets you make a decision. And that decision may take it back through the process. It may go through to production. And that's some of the things which have been talked about by other members on the panel. And then final publication, online and in print. So that's the entire process. So first, I just want to talk about a few tools. And this is a high-level view. I'm not to get into great detail. Um, and the first thing is metadata collection, making sure you have all the data that you need before it gets into the journal workflow, before it gets into that editorial process. Collecting any supplemental material. We've had talks about data repositories and, and other ways to capture material. Make sure you get it in the beginning. Supporting flexible file types. If you're an engineering journal, you may want to accept LaTeX or something similar. We can facilitate that kind of thing. FundRef was a, talked about that earlier, but we can support that. We can get that funding information at the very beginning. 
This is a typical submission page. It's a step-by-step -step process. What you'll see here is collecting information. It's collecting data. And those can be any kinds of data. They can be the upload of files, the provision of a title and an abstract, but it can be custom data too. There can be questions, there are web forms. You can ask for text, you can have check boxes, radio buttons, but any kind of vital information that you need, you can get. Again, we can collect different types of file. We have a concept called file designation. It lets you label a file. You can choose, for instance, if a file is supplementary material, if it's graphics, and you can map it into the proof itself, or you can have it kept separately. But that data then is available to reviewers, it's available to editors, it's available to whoever needs to have access to it. And you don't need to do anything to facilitate that. This is an upload of a LaTeX document. It's quite simple to do. Um, you simply locate an archive or a file and upload it into the system. Everything else is unpacked and a PDF proof is generated. If you we are now starting to support preprint repositories like archive.org. We can pull in the actual preprint into the system and automatically build the proof from that. So we're starting to bring in some of that interoperability. FundRef has already been spoken about, but that's one thing that we also facilitate. We're not the only system that facilitates that. And during that submission process, we can collect funding information. It's a simple searchable tool of those 5,000 funding bodies. And once that funding information is collected, it becomes an integral part of the manuscript itself. So it becomes part of that record, it becomes part of that XML. So when it leaves our system and goes on to be published, that information is available. And it links manuscripts to the funding source that gave birth to them, which is obviously a very important metric. I can also talk a little bit about the editorial tools that will facilitate things and reduce those burdens. ORCID has been talked about a lot. It really will help, we hope, with um, managing your users and disambiguating users. Electronic forms for handling the paperwork. Reporting tools for managing your journal. Plagiarism checking, and I'm sorry to use the term plagiarism, but um, originality checking to make sure it is original work that's coming in. Duplicate submission checks, which goes hand in hand with that. Open access tools, these all facilitate open access in a way, but we have some more specific tools, such as manuscript transfer. And e-commerce, we can also bring into this process. I'm not going to talk a lot about ORCID. It's a repository, well, it, it, it's, it's just a registry which collects together all the person's work, but it effectively labels them with a single number. In scholarly manuscripts, we can collect that information. We can drive people to generate their own ORCID, or we can associate an ORCID account with scholarly manuscripts. It makes life easy for them, and it makes sure we know who we're dealing with and who you're assigning to, to do reviews. And once again, that's part of a record. It stays part of that record. And you can link straight through to the ORCID to see somebody's works if you need to, just by clicking the link. Electronic forms. We can collect forms throughout the process. These can be copyright forms, license forms, anything else. We can collect them We can from authors, from co-authors, from any kind of author. They do it in their author center, so they go and do this in exactly the same place as they complete their submission, so they don't need to go somewhere separate to register their form. It's a task. You can give it a number of days. You can say it takes 20 days to do that. You can generate reminders based on that task, and those can be automated. So they drive the process, and they ensure that the forms come back in. And you can hold a workflow till the forms are complete, or you can go ahead and process it and wait for the forms to come in later. So you don't need to hold things up unless you need to. They appear on a dashboard, so you can, you can track them. You can see what's pending, what's come in for checking. So nothing ever gets lost. And those forms are web forms. They can be completed online or they can be downloaded and signed and returned to you. So it's up to you what your process is. If you use an online form, it can be done quite quickly and you can get that copyright information back to you instantaneously. So no delays. Reporting tools, they're also integrated into the system. We have standardized reports which cover key metrics, submissions, um, time to decision. We also have build your own tools. They work on the basis of a data tree. You drag and drop data into a system. You don't need to understand databases or those kind of tools. And you can save these reports. You can make them available to people. 
you can apply filters, and you can generate distribution lists. So even if the users aren't actually users of the system, they can receive reports on how your journal is doing. Authenticate lets you check for, I should say, originality. You simply send a file to the uh, cross-check service. It brings you back an originality report and, and a value that's tied to that. That value is only indicative. It doesn't mean that it is plagiarized. It doesn't mean it isn't original. There's often reasons for that. And you can use a document viewer to actually check on that. So you can check whether or not those similarities are actual real ones. And that, a history of that is kept in the system, so if there are questions later, you can come back and check on those. Duplicate submission checking works in a very similar fashion, but this is for manuscripts which haven't been published. We generate two values, one based on authorship and one based on the title itself. And it simply flags the fact that a duplicate has come in. That could be a, uh, a valid duplicate, somebody's just pressed the button twice, or it could be something a little more mysterious. Open access, uh, I'm not going to concentrate too much on this slide, but we can facilitate this process in a few places. Manuscript transfer is obviously a key place. We can move it from one journal to another journal. It's simply a case of making a decision and saying, I would like to send this manuscript somewhere else. I don't think it's suitable for my publication. Everything is transferred. So all that metadata, all the reviews, everything else in the system gets transferred to the new journal, so the editors can make a quick decision. We also give authors the ability to say yes or no to that. They may not want to be reconsidered, they may wish to submit it somewhere else. E-commerce, we can apply that at submission or post acceptance. Again, it's done through the author center, the same place they complete those forms, the same place they submit their manuscript. It's trackable on those dashboards, so you know exactly what's pending. You can manage it, so you can waive fees, you can change fees. And you can uh, actually process, uh, put formulas into that. So you can combine payments into a single payment. Um, and just on the last item, I just want to talk a little bit about peer review tools before my time runs out. Efficient tracking via those dashboards, so you know what's happening to manuscripts. Managing the review selections to find those right people. Finding the best ones, the ones that will give you the data that you need to make a decision on the manuscript. Automated reminders to chase them in an efficient fashion. And external searching tools. So this is the process itself. It's all driven by the number of reviews you would like to make a decision. That can be changed at any time. But then you can track it on this dashboard, so you can see each manuscript and at what step it is at at that workflow. So you can always check what needs to happen next. And we can step through this. But the key thing is there that the dashboard tells you what needs to happen next. It makes sure you need to get the data that you get to make a decision. We have reviewer selection tools. Um, those are search tools for your own database. You can choose the right people. You can have alternates list, a substitution bench, so if reviewers say no, you can automatically appoint somebody else to actually take a look at that manuscript. And if you can't find the right person in your own database, we have a reviewer locator tool. This uses the web of science. It's fully automated, so based on the criteria that you set and the manuscript title and abstract itself, it will automatically pull back suitable reviewers from the web of science who can be added or to, to, to that list of reviewers on the manuscript. And you can check through to see why they've been recommended. You can look at their previous record, any citations that they've made. So all that data is available to you in one place. Automatic reminders, they're all scheduled. They're all based on that schedule. You can send out reminders before it's due, after it's due, when it's due. You can send out thank yous to authors, uh, to, to the reviewers. So everything is communicated to them. And you define the way that's communicated. So just to summarize, we have lots of tools really to help things. We can help with the manuscript submission process. We can help with checking those manuscripts, making sure they're good to go through the process. And we can help with the, uh, finding the right reviewers and managing that side of things too. And the idea is that all these things can help you manage that growing burden of submissions and, and really just you know, the, that you benefit from that success as opposed to feel it as, as you know, additional labor. And that's all I have to say on this for now, so thank you.